it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. It is Monday night, Bible study, and we're going to be talking about uh, the book in the in the book of Genesis and chapters. We're going to go through, I believe it's chapter eighteen tonight. Um, so let's see. Let me flip over here. Good to see everybody. So, um, we're going to do 15, 16, and 17 tonight, and then 18, 19, and 20 tomorrow night, okay? And we are in Genesis, and I never did come back to y'all on Thursday like I was supposed to. I think it was Thursday. Um, and I can't remember exactly what happened, but uh, Friday, I did go out with, uh, I think I went out to eat on Friday night. So, um... Anyway, I'm here tonight. You know, I tell y'all that you just never know for sure if I'm going to be here or not. Just kind of, I don't, I, it might drive some of y'all crazy, but um, I'll be here when I can, you know. And it doesn't mean I'm sick or anything. It's just that I'll be here when I can. So tonight, I've been reading a new study Bible. I got a new study Bible. It's an ESV study Bible that I went to all these uh, outlet Saturday night, I asked Amy, would she go with me? And she said no. And I asked Chris, would he go with me? And he said no. So I went by myself. And I had seen this Bible before there, before it's been months ago. And I didn't get it. And I thought, well, today I'm going to get it. And so I did. It's very, very detailed. Um... So, I mean, it's still the Word of God, and you should re read it before you read anything else. And then look at your study material, but it gets, you know, it's a lot more in-depth. Um, so, I read, you know, I've read some of it. I was going to touch base. I was wondering if they would have something that I would want to talk to y'all about that we haven't really talked about. Um, and I would say probably no at this point. Uh, because if they get into, uh, I don't want it to get so deep that it's, you know, we are not in theology school or nothing. So, you know, we're not studying to be pastors. So, um, anyway, so we're going to start with Genesis 15 tonight. And that's God, God's covenant with Abraham, Abram. He's still called Abram right here. And Sari is Sari and not Sarah. And um, because... God doesn't call Ab Abram Abraham, I think, until the, the following chapter. But this talks about God's covenant with Abraham, and he tells Abraham that he is uh, the Lord that brought him out of the out from Ur of the Chaldeans, and that he's going um, to give him the lands to possess, okay? And so... He comes to Abraham in a dream, and he tells Abraham that he is going to uh, be blessed with a big family, but he also lets him know that, that they're going to be sojourners in a country for 400 years, okay, and that they would be afflicted for 400 years, but he's going to bring judgment on the nations and uh, they're going to come out with great possessions. So he he tells him good news and bad news. He tells Abraham that he is going to give him children. And at, at this time, he hasn't, he hasn't had any children yet. And so then in chapter 16, uh, Sari decides that she wants Hagar, her handmaid, to have a baby for Abram. And so he, she asks her husband to go into her handmaid, and her handmaid and uh, Abram do um, lay with each other, and they, she conceives and has a son. Now, once she has the child, of course, Sari gets jealous and decides to treat her bad and runs her off. And I always thought this was so sad, and. So she, Sari deals harshly with her, and she flees. 
And when she flees, it says an angel of the Lord found her by spring of water. And um, the angel says, Hagar, servant of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? And, Sarah, and she says, I am fleeing from my mistress, Sarah. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. And the angel of the Lord said, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. The angel said to Hagar, Behold, you are pregnant, and you shall bear a son, and call his name Ishmael. Because the Lord has listened to your affliction, he will be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against every one. This says that Ishmael means God hears. Or you are a God who sees me. Um, I was going to see if they, if they say anything about that donkey. But I don't think they do. They don't. Okay. So it said, he, and, he, and the angel continues and says, Everyone's hand will be against him and he shall dwell over against all his kins, kinsmen. Um, so the Lord who spoke to her, uh, she says to the Lord, You are a God of seeing. Truly here I have seen him who looks after me. Um, and she tells him, then, you know, she goes back and her and Abram do have another son and they call him Ishmael. Okay, so this angel lets her know to go back, tells her that even if, you know, Sari has dealt with her harshly, that he is going to bless her and give her a son and that he is going to have a lot of kinsmen. So, um, in chapter 17... Abraham, um, God comes to Abraham and he tells him that he's going to be blameless and he's going to, he wants to make a covenant with him. And he makes a covenant with Abram that all of him and his men have to be circumcised. He also tells him that his name will no longer be Abram, but it'll be Abraham. So this is when Abraham becomes, because, this is when Abram becomes Abraham, and it's because God gives him the covenant of circumcision. And he does this, he says, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram. But your name shall be Abraham, for I've made you the father of a multitude of nations. And I will make you exceedingly fruitful and will make you into nations and kings shall come from you. Okay. He establishes his covenant between him and his offspring after you throughout the generations for an everlasting covenant. Um, so Abram, of course, uh, obeys God, and he circumcises all the men, including his new son, Ishmael. And um, that was the sign of the covenant between God and Abraham. Okay? Let's see. And then in, chap and, and then in verse 15, he tells Abraham that his wife, Sarai, is going to have a baby. And Abraham kind of laughs because he's old and Sarah is 90. And they both kind of laugh about it. But uh, so he, at first he thinks he's talking about Ishmael. And, and God says, no, I'm not talking about Ishmael. I'm going to, Sarah is going to have a son. And, um, so it says, when he had finished talking with Abraham, he went up from Abraham. Then Abraham took Ishmael and all of those born in his house, bought with his money, every male among the men. Um, and that's when they were circumcised. And Abram, Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised. 
that very day Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised, and the men of the house, born in the house, and bought with money, were all circumcised with them. Um, so we are going to stop here at chapter 18. Let's see. Because that is when God tells Sarah about her son, and that uh, talks about Isaac being born. So we'll stop there, and we'll and we'll talk about Isaac and Sarah. So chapters eighteen and nineteen, God rescues Lot, and twenty Abraham and and Abimelech. Oh, actually, Isaac's not born until chapter 21. So I think uh, Sarah, God talks to Sarah in chapter 18, uh, 19 and 20. So we'll do 18, 19, and 20 tomorrow night. Uh, it looks like that Isaac's not going to be born until chapter 21, y'all. But this is all... Um, something new with God, you know, he decides after Noah and the ark and all of these people are born, and then Abram is born out of the lineage of Seth, which was a child of Noah, and now God has established a covenant with his people, okay, so this is the beginning of a covenant, a promise from God for his people, um, and it all starts with Abraham, who has faith enough to listen and obey. Um, and faith, with all of these patriarch guys, men in the Bible, uh, faith is the key, you know. And then, of course, it becomes the only way in the New Testament. But right now, they have uh, a law that God has established. And it's a blessing to them uh, to have such a law. Uh, because they know that their God, the one and only God, loves them. And he's doing it to help them prosper, okay? He's not doing it to be lay down the law. He's doing it to help them prosper and to be set apart um, to be his people and show others in the world, you know, that he is a real God, the one and only God. So, um I guess, really, we didn't have, you know, anything much in detail besides the circumcision. Now, in the New Testament, Paul does have to get on to some of the disciples because they start talking about circumcision after salvation and Jesus has died. And we all know with in the Age of Grace, this covenant of circumcision is part of the Old Testament law and is no longer required. There's nothing that we can do for our salvation in the New Testament with the new covenant that God has provided through his son, Jesus Christ. Um, the promise of salvation that we have. So Paul has to tell them and get on to them and say that, you know, circumcision does not bring salvation, you know. So, um, that happens in the New Testament. But this is the law of circumcision in the Old Testament when it was established, okay? Um, I hope y'all had a blessed day. I don't know if y'all seen my crazy video this morning and be putting out my Thanksgiving and fall decorations or not. But y'all, I went back downstairs and I could not find my Halloween decorations anywhere. So I don't know what in the world happened to them. I don't know if Chris... Had, I don't really know what happened to them. I wonder if he gave them to Goodwill or something crazy. But me and Amy pulled down two boxes that they could have been in and they weren't in. So I don't have any Halloween decorations. So in mine were just fun decorations. They weren't spooky or nothing. But so be it. I'm not going to go buy any with us uh, planning to move in about a year. Um, so I hope that you guys get motivated and get your fall stuff out. I do like to see people get thankful things out for Thanksgiving 
and celebrate for Thanksgiving um, and not just Christmas. I am guilty though. If I have a big meal for Thanksgiving, I do put up my Christmas tree before everybody gets here because it's just fun. And that way it's up for, you know, a long enough period of time that I enjoy it because my mama taught me to take down my Christmas tree before January the 1st. She always said, don't bring the old year into the new year. So we always take everything down and put it up, have it boxed up and put up before New Year's Day. So I usually pull mine out, you know, at Thanksgiving and start decorating. I had always done it when the girls were on their Thanksgiving break. We would get out the Christmas decorations and put them up. So Chris is down in Florida with his daddy. They were fishing on the beach. The last time I checked, they made it down there safe, and um, he said the weather was really nice, but the next couple of days it's going to be really hot, um, so I'm not sure that, I don't think he'll get his daddy out in that heat, unless he gets them out really late in the afternoons, or evenings. Um, so y'all just um, pray for them, and pray they'll stay safe, and have a good tree up, and I hope they catch some fish. Um, and I've enjoyed studying in God's Word today. I've read all about the old the Genesis and the Old Testament. And there's a lot to it. Um, but it's just, you know, most of it, the, the thing I got the most out of it was this, okay? There are people who want to have different theories on the creation, on the... Uh, writings of Genesis, whether or not, what time it was, who wrote it, etc. The main thing for me is, I'm going to say, and even they say in here, is the number one thing is that we get out of Genesis, is that it lets us know that there's a, a, a God who created this world out of nothing. He started with nothing, and it became something. So he spoke it into existence. And we are to believe, have faith and believe in this God who has created us. Now, after he created us and put Adam and Eve in the garden and they sinned and then they had offspring and then the world became something that God didn't intend for it to be, they definitely were worshiping God. They were not doing what God really created them to do. So he brought the flood and in a sense started all over. And even after Noah uh, listened and obeyed, he still failed and sinned and did things he shouldn't do. Um, and so now we have come to this chapter where God is, is establishing a covenant. So God does different things in this Old Testament Bible at different times to talk and to communicate and to have a relationship with his people. And so just remember that. Um, if, there's, if there's not a lot of information, if he didn't say exactly how he created the earth, that doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter that it's not spelled out scientifically. What matters is that he did. So if he thinks it's important, he's going to tell you. If it's not that important, then you don't need to worry yourself with it and try to rack your brain as to how in the world these things happened. Just know that they did happen. That's what having faith is. Having faith is believing. Um, we don't have to be... Uh, it's a spiritual uh, thing. Only the Holy Spirit and God uh, can help you to believe and have faith that you need. And faith does come by, by reading the Word of God. So remember that if you don't have the faith that you think you need or you're questioning things, then pray that God would give you faith. Okay? And so for the most part, I just want to say that even if it's not in there spelled out in black and white, to explain it to a T, God told us what he wanted us to know. God is perfect. God is just. 
God is amazing and he loves his people. And that's what we need to see, how much he loves us, okay? Um, let's say our prayers and I will see you guys tomorrow. Y'all read through chapter 20 because chapter 21, I think, is when um, Isaac is born. I kind of wanted to read when Isaac is born. Let me look and see if that, because if it is, we're going to read that one too. Who don't want to hear about a beautiful baby being born? The birth of Isaac, chapter 21. Let's go ahead and read it too. Why not? Y'all listen to the Audible Bible if you don't uh, want to read that, that much. Um, but I want to I want to hear about the birth of Isaac. All right, let's thank you for all of us here gathered to, tonight in your name to read your word, to learn more about you. We pray, Lord, that you would give us the faith that we need to believe. We pray that your Holy Spirit would be with us as we read your word and listen. Um, and I pray that our ears would be open and our hearts would um, take in everything that you would have us spiritually in our mind as well. Um, that you would help us to get out of your word what you would have us get out of your word. And then you would give us um, the time that we uh, would be willing to use for you during the day to do this and to get back together tomorrow night. Be with us as we go throughout this night. I pray that each of us have a good night's sleep and that we have a blessed day. And we'll be back here to talk about you again tomorrow night. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope y'all had a good day, and I will see y'all tomorrow night. Bye, y'all. Love ya. I'm going to bed early tonight. Chris keeps me up late, late, late. Sometimes we don't go to sleep till like 1 o'clock, but I'm going to go to bed early this week. And get up early, because I'm an early bird. Bye, y'all. Love ya.